<laughs> all right, all right, all right. I realized as we were coming out, we're what stands between you and lunch. So we will make it <laughs> snappy. We will make it good. Um, <laughs> Record and record number of women are running for Congress. A record number of women um, are running for for the governor's mansions. Records number record numbers of women are donating, and record number of women are turning out. The numbers don't lie. They also tell a new story, a nuanced story, and that's what we want to dive into. What does it foreshadow? What message are women voters sending right now? especially when it comes to 2018 and beyond. So let's do it. Um, Celinda, you literally wrote the book on <laughs> women with Kelly voting and Kamala. With, with a certain pollster <laughs> that I think, a Republican pollster I think a lot of people know. Um, but when it comes to women voters, um, are you finding that women voters are focused on the same issues today than they were focused when you wrote the book in 2005? There's a lot. And one of the new issues that's really emerged is gun violence. Women are extremely focused on gun violence in schools. And then as Speaker Pelosi, I like to call her Speaker, uh, said, um, women are very, very on millennial voters, which is, um, I, I guess we can say politicians of every stripe have been dogged by the ability to turn out this huge and very important voting block. When you look particularly, Kristen, at millennial women voters, what are you seeing from them? Do you, I mean, are you seeing a trend, um, a new level of enthusiasm? Do you think they're gonna turn out? Well, I think foiled down to losing millennial women. Now the question of will they turn out, I think is still on young yeah. women. Do they think that voting is a key component of that? Now, there's some data. Um, Tufts, and, uh, just on the most basic level, if you had the answer to this, <laughs> you would be paid by every politician. Um, why they don't? Is it just, just by age, they just don't seem a need to vote? I, I think part of it is when you ask people, um, do you think that you that people should have to know? A I think another thing that goes on for young voters is they have lots of other ways to express their activism. I mean, for the Democrats, and particularly for the women um, and the millennial women who are the gag rule on women right. who have experienced this, then uh, millennial women start to connect their voting to the issues that matter to them. When it comes to um, Democratic women, Celinda, is this, in the, in the new enthusiasm that you're seeing, is it all about Donald Trump? No, it's not all about Donald Trump, but uh, Donald Trump is a very big factor in it. But there's a huge difference among women between college-educated women and non-college-educated women. College-educated women are now so fired up. That's where, where, where voters are giving a lot of credit to Republicans, That's right. giving a lot of credit to the president still That's on right. the economy. Despite what the president has said over and over again, he did not win among all women in 2016. <laughs> yeah. But he does, say, he does say it all the time, though. That's what I have to point it out. He says a lot of things all the time. <laughs> I digress. Including um, two women. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he did win among white women. Uh, when it comes to... But white women, women have always voted Republican. When it comes to w women Trump voters, we'll call them, where have you seen a change... Do you see, since he's taken office, since he won the election? You know, I think a lot of way the gender gap works, yeah. you know, it, it cuts both ways. In that same poll, were you when, you, well, one of the keys is married women. And one of the, so there are two policies that Democrats would benefit enormously from. A national. I do think that our politics are increasingly becoming defined around um, I, I identity. And I think that one of the biggest mistakes of Republicans after this election, if we do look at, statewide races like when you're talking about governor's races um that is where at least right now we've seen women of color play an especially mm -hmm. yeah big role uh, do you see do you see them turning out do, oh yeah in, in, in a way it we depends have a women of color are not monolithic and right. uh we have done several studies now including the ywca study where we women candidates as well but really quick just drilling down on one major issue that's become such an issue the brett kavanaugh did that change the game, do you think, in terms of what is going to happen in 2018 and beyond? 2018, let's talk about 2018 when it comes to women voters. I, I'm curious. For yeah, I don't think it changed the game. I mean, Kavanaugh reinforced, we were talking about this earlier, Kavanaugh reinforced the women who were already fired up and ready to go. Uh, what um, on, women candidate, on women candidates, um, as we said, just record numbers across the board. 239 women are running for the House. Currently, there are 84 women serving in the chamber. 23 women are running for the Senate. 
23 are currently serving. 16 women are running for the governor's mansions. Uh, there are only six women governors serving right now. And I don't think I need to remind everyone, women make up more than half the U.S. population. <laughs> so just to point it out, what is it about this year, Celinda? Well, I think that Trump, well, I, uh, a lot of women were motivated by local issues uh, who had never thought. I mean, we have okay. record numbers of women doctors and teachers running. Republicans have efforts, for instance, you know, Representative Elise Stefanik is the yeah. NRCC. And so there is a real chance that we're going to get to Election Day and there's going to be more women than ever in Congress and there will be fewer Republican women in the House. And mm. that breaks my heart. Do, do you think women candidates have an advantage with women voters? Oh, they definitely have an advantage with women voters, but tear off down the hall to vote for the woman. So, uh, it's fascinating because it's not just how many women are running, it's how they're running that mm -hmm. seems to be so yeah. different. I mean, it, they're highlighting their gender rather than hiding right. it. Uh, makeup in right. ads, so talking right. about um, assault and abuse in, right. in their campaign. Um, what does that mean, do you think? I think for this, we do it. It's in a different way because of those sort of underlying that underlying reticence to say, well, women. Trump's ahead by record numbers. If you ask who's ahead on health care, Democrats are killing on that issue. The third issue, Republicans are ahead on that by one. I think is why you have so many sort of strange, conflicting signals about what. And that's is why you had Speaker Pelosi say we're going to lead with campaign finance reform. The number of women who will run in both parties. Well, they're also changing the game as well. I interviewed a Democratic nominee for Congress, um, Luba Gretchen Shirley, and mm -hmm. she forced the FEC to uh, allow campaign funds to be used to pay for her ba for babysitting. Right. Um, and this gets to because we're also seeing younger. Yeah. Yeah. younger women candidates running of a babysitter. Well, and this is something, so Pew Research Center asked voters why, if you look at the conservative side of our society where you're gonna kind of over-index for more traditional family structures, I think that just creates an even bigger. So, Celinda, so will it matter how many women ran or even how many women won in primaries if there isn't a landslide of women winning? In oh, weeks? it'll matter because, and this is, I think, one of the um, Amy Chosick of the New York Times, she wrote a very timely and very thought-provoking piece this weekend for the Times about the year of the woman, and I think it was titled Down with the Year of the Woman, and I'll read you one paragraph. <laughs> Are female candidates still unicorns, magical woodland creatures that rear their <laughs> sparkling horns every couple of decades and only when provoked, as they were after Anita Hill's testimony in 91 and Christine Blasey Ford's agonizing account of sexual assault last month? The last year of the woman was the 92 election. Um, how will we know when we're beyond a year of the woman, a pink wave, as I <laughs> would love if we could wholeheartedly reject that moniker, when women are running and voting, winning and serving, it's, and it becomes the norm and not the exception? To see, what are you looking for come election night and come the exit polls? To see where the real impact was from the women voting, women candidates, more with the women vote this cycle. So where you have an awful lot of, not just women, but college educated women. Um, you know, right now, college educated women, their disapproval of Donald Trump is it said. As the pollsters, what is your prediction? What's gonna happen? Do you think, do, do, D's, take the, do D's take the House and R's keep the Senate? Where 